I'm Nell Abram with FSRN Headlines. After 10 years of tense debate, Australia's minority government joined forces with the Greens and passed a law today that sets a price tag on carbon emissions. Prime Minister Julia Gillard. Today, Australia has a price on carbon as the law of our land. This comes after a quarter of a century of scientific warnings, 37 parliamentary inquiries and years of bitter debate and division. The measure will force the country's most egregious polluters to pay for each tonne of carbon they emit. In 2015, the program shifts to a cap-and-trade plan. Australia is a minor emitter of the greenhouse gas on a global scale, but the country's deep reliance on fossil fuels makes them the largest emitter per person in the developed world. Voters are casting ballots in state and local elections around the country today. In Maine, voters will decide if they want to restore Election Day voter sign-up. Opponents of the measure are running an ad campaign that suggests support for same-day ballot access is support for gay rights. Betsy Smith, executive director of Equality Maine, calls the notion ridiculous. Do we as Equality Maine support same-day voter registration? Yes, we do, because we believe putting up barriers to voting is not democratic. However, it has nothing to do with um, an effort to either pass marriage equality or advance marriage equality. Federal civil rights monitors are watching polls in five states, including California, Texas, Massachusetts, and Ohio. They're also in Mississippi, where an amendment to the state's constitution that would define a single word, person, may succeed. If passed, the definition would include every human being from the moment of fertilization, cloning, or the functional equivalent thereof. The amendment is couched as a measure to stop abortions, even in cases of rape and incest, but it could also affect access to birth control and fertility treatments. The turnout for the runoff election in Liberia was very light today after the opposition candidate dropped out and called for a boycott. Protests yesterday turned violent. Two people died. Opposition candidate and former UN diplomat Winston Tubman blamed incumbent and Nobel Peace Prize winner Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. To shoot at unarmed people in the streets, walking peacefully, this never happened during war. But this is a lady who brought war here. Thousands were killed, and it seems she's ready to kill more. Sirleaf is virtually assured of victory. The United Nations updated its estimate of the death toll in Syria's now eight months uprising, U.N. spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani says the violence and arrests persisted even as the country celebrated the Muslim festival Eid over the weekend. The brutal crackdown on dissent in Syria has so far claimed the lives of more than 3,500 Syrians. More than 60 people are reported to have been killed by military and security forces since Syria signed the peace plan sponsored by the League of Arab States, including at least 19 on Eid al-Adha on Sunday. The Syrian government did announce that 553 detainees were released on Saturday, but tens of thousands remain in detention and dozens are reported to be arbitrarily arrested every day. In California, a local police department is refusing to hand over details of the controversial policing of Occupy Oakland on October 26th. George Lavender reports. More than 100 people involved in Occupy Oakland were arrested and several injured by police two weeks ago. After an early morning attack on the camp, police used tear gas, flashbang grenades, rubber bullets, beanbags and other weapons against demonstrators. 24-year-old member of Veterans for Peace Scott Olson was critically injured. Following the police action, the American Civil Liberties Union asked the Oakland Police Department to release details of the events, but so far they have refused to do so. In 2003, the Oakland Police Department was sued for excessive use of force on people demonstrating against the Iraq War. There is also pending litigation regarding the policing of demonstrations following the killing of Oscar Grant by a police officer in Oakland. I'm sure everyone would prefer not to relive Groundhog Day with respect to the OPD. Linda Lai is staff attorney for the American Civil Liberties Union. Excessive force is never appropriate, and it's particularly inappropriate when it is um, marshaled in response to a political protest because the result is to make people afraid to exercise their right to demonstrate. Last Wednesday, police in Oakland again used tear gas and rubber bullets on demonstrators during the general strike. George Lavender, FSRN, Oakland. The International Atomic Energy Agency released a highly anticipated report on the status of Iran's nuclear program to member states today. 
An abridged version says that credible information reveals some of Iran's nuclear development has civilian purposes, but other elements are specific to nuclear weapons. The report indicates that nuclear research for military use continued after 2003. However, the IAEA report says it's not clear if this development is currently in process. Tehran has consistently denied developing nuclear capabilities for military use. For FSRN, from Tampa, Florida, I'm Nell Abram.